Good morning. I want us to talk about Daniel in training. And we're going to look at the first chapter of Daniel. Now, what took place was about 600 years before Jesus Christ came on this earth. And this man, Daniel, is absolutely beautiful. A very special man. A man who is a favorite in my heart and mind. Whenever I read about him, I'm thrilled. Now, let's just get the scene. We find that it tells us at the beginning of Daniel that Nebuchadnezzar came against Judah, which was the southern kingdom where Jerusalem is, and took them captive, and they became exiles in Babylon 600 years before Jesus. Now, some of the men were chosen because they were special fellows, and a group of them, including Daniel, were taken for the king's service and put into training. And that's what I want us to see today. And I think to get the real picture, you have to see what's happening. These young men were probably late teens, early 20s. They've been taken from their homes. They've been taken from their land. They've been taken with their nation into another land. A land where people don't speak the same language, where they have a different culture. And they have to do what they're told. And it would have been so easy to become bitter, full of self-pity, anger, etc., etc. But these men didn't. They saw an opportunity to serve the Lord their God exactly where they were. So let's look at the text of Daniel 1. In the third year of the reign of the king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came and took Jerusalem. And the Lord delivered the king of Judah into his hands. And then it says, Then the king ordered the chief of the court of the officials to bring in some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. That was pretty high qualifications, to say the least of it. Take a second look at verse 4, and it's amazing what was needed. And so these men were chosen. We know four of them. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those four stand out in this whole book of Daniel. And what incredible men they were. Notice they were not even to have a physical defect. And they were taken into the king's palace. And the first thing is, the king had a special diet for them. It says in verse 5, The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. By the way, when it talks about learning the Babylonian literature, don't you think that that's some sort of ancient culture or civilization that really didn't have anything? They were an incredible civilization. They were a fantastic culture. So often we get so taken up with the evolutionist theory, we don't see how well trained these people were. We can't imagine the literature they had. Did you know that Abraham, years before this, was involved in modern mathematics? And we think we've become modern? That was in Ur of the Chaldees. Now these things are things that we don't recognize. Who do you think the engineers were who built the pyramids in Egypt? The culture of the early days was absolutely great. And if you see it as some form of apes just standing up, I can't accept that. I find that these were people with brains. So these men had to learn the language, which was obvious, but they had to read the literature. They had to be quick to learn. They had to have aptitude. It's all there. Fantastic. Now, problem. Verse 5 says they are to be on a special diet supplied from the king's table. Well, you say that's not bad. Well, it was for Daniel. The food was not kosher. And he was a Jew of the Jews. And he was not about to defile himself. Listen to what he says. Because they are a little concerned. Verses 6 and 7. Among them were some from Judah, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the chief official gave them these names. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself in this way. Daniel couldn't handle that. 
He said, there's no way that I can go through that. But he's gracious about it. And here you see the mark of the Lord on Daniel. Some of us would have responded in such an antagonistic way. Say, look here, we're Christians, this, this, this. Daniel didn't do that. Daniel asked permission of the chief official and said, can I be exempt from eating this food? Now, you see, there are two ways of doing things. And Daniel had grace and Daniel had love, which sometimes Christian people lack. I know there have been times when I've lacked that. I've been so right. And I'm sure there are times when you've been so right. But we haven't done it with the love of the Lord. We haven't spoken with the love of the Lord. We've done it in a bombastic, antagonistic sort of way. That's a danger. I really think that's a danger at times with some in the moral majority. And we're going to get a kickback from other people on this as Christian people. We've got to be gracious. We've got to have the mind of Jesus. We've got to have the compassion of Jesus. Daniel had it 600 years before Jesus came. Beautiful man. But let's read a bit more. Verse 9. Now God had caused the official to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my Lord and King who's assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men of your age? The king would then have my head because of you. The official says, look, I'm fond of you, but I'm not about to lose my head on your behalf. And you can understand that. I mean, it's a little heavy, isn't it? It's an awful way to die. But he was kind about it. He just said, I can't do it. So Daniel continued in verse 11. Then Daniel said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Please test your servants for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. Daniel and his friends became vegetarians. Again, he says it very nicely. He says it very beautifully. He approaches the guard in the right way. And the man responds. He says, yes, we'll do that test. And by the way, notice the difference in the food. The other men were having the best food from the pallets and wine. These four men had vegetables and water. That's interesting right there. It may just be that some of us don't eat the right diet. And the next thing is we have all sorts of problems and sicknesses and wonder why and think what on earth's going on. But then I find something still more. We find the results of God's diet and we find it in verse 15. At the end of 10 days, they looked healthier, better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice of food and wine and they were to drink water and were to have vegetables instead. Now that's beautiful, isn't it? Poor fellows lost their good food and got that. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Now there's a whole lot there for us to understand. First of all, because these men honored God and would eat nothing but kosher food, God honored them and gave them special understanding gave them special ability, gave them that ability to learn. That's our God. When we honor him, he in return honors us. And that was true for these four. And that's beautiful. But still more than that, you see, not only did they have that ability, but for Daniel, he was given the ability to interpret dreams and visions. Now, we don't experience the dreams and visions that they did in those days. For a number of reasons, not least that we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. And if you have God dwelling within you, and God can minister to you, and God can speak to you, he doesn't need to give you a bunch of dreams. Now, I didn't say God never gives a dream, and I didn't say God never gives a vision. I believe he does. I also believe they're few and far between. And I think when someone's always having dreams and always having visions, they need to check out whether it's really of the Lord our God. We don't need that with the Holy Spirit. These people didn't have the Holy Spirit, and God spoke very clearly through both dreams and visions. Daniel had the ability to interpret, 
and this was used in each of the king's reigns while Daniel was there. So God worked in a fantastic way. Now we find something more. Verses 18 to 20, these men come before King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them in, the chief official presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none to equal Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in the whole of the kingdom. Now one reminder here. This nation was very occult, and it still is. Well, what do I mean by that? There were very strong spirits from Satan that controlled the enchanters, the magicians. These were men who were under satanic power. And here we're looking at the Middle East, the Iran, Iraq area. And that occult hold is equally strong today. It has not changed in thousands of years. Understand that when you look at today's history and see what's happening there. So these men came before the king, the four of them, and they were ten times brighter than anyone else. Why? Because God was involved. And as these men had honored God, God honored them. And he poured out his wisdom on them. It wasn't just their wisdom. It was the wisdom of God. And Nebuchadnezzar was absolutely amazed and, of course, used them mightily. Daniel, in his training, had become someone very special in God's sight. And God wanted to use him mightily, and he did. Therefore, God gave him the necessary gifts. From start to finish, you see the hand of God on Daniel. But as against Jonah, who we looked at last week, you see the most beautiful response in Daniel to the Lord his God. Someone he loved, someone he worshipped, someone he spent time with. This young man had it together because he spent time in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Do you? Did you have a time with the Lord today? If you did, you're in for a good day. If you didn't, you could have a problem.